If you are new and you've never seen my face before, hello, I am Gayla. And today I wanted to talk about a prominent lasting effect from growing up with a parent who's a hoarder, which is loneliness. I have recently been struggling with feelings of loneliness and I had to work on them in therapy. And I had some really great epiphanies and I wanted to share them with you guys. I'm assuming 99.9% .9 of you who watch this are people who have experienced growing up or living for an extended period of time in a home with someone who is a hoarder. If you are curious about my specific circumstances and what my childhood home was like, I made a video about it. I'll put like a little ping or I forgot what they're called, like a little like brrr, uh, somewhere on the screen. I also have a video talking about other effects that I have experienced like feelings of shame, fear of appearing dirty or gross, and just fear of connection in general. I'll put another thing up there, but for this video, I wanted to really zero in on feeling lonely and alone. In the most recent video that I posted, which I think is titled, I feel like shit or I am shit or something like that. When I was editing it, I kept on saying the phrase, I'm alone, I feel alone, I'm alone, I feel alone. And that's what really triggered me to be like, oh, this is something to think about. I'm not just feeling lonely because I don't have anyone in my life who has experienced growing up in a hoarder home. It's more that I feel lonely about everything. I feel like I, I can't talk about anything authentically or I don't wanna be a burden to someone else. People don't feel safe for me to reach out to, even if I've, like, I'm friends with them. I just, there's something that prevents me from wanting to reach out. And I've come to some conclusions as to why I feel this way. When I was growing up and I was living with my parent in my childhood home, the only person I was allowed to be 100% authentic with and talk about basically everything with was my parent, who was a hoarder. Because of growing up like this, other people outside of our home felt like outsiders. They didn't feel safe to reach out to, mainly because if you're taught to keep a secret as big as my home that I go to every single day and lay my head down to sleep in, is disgusting and horrible and whatever. Because you're keeping this huge secret, and it's also for the benefit of your parent, you're kind of being taught, or I was, I'll speak for myself, I was being taught that other people's opinions are scary and hurtful, and they won't understand, they'll be very judgmental, and bad things will happen as a result of me being authentic, which is talking about the child at home. Because of this, Reaching out about anything feels scary to me still. I'm obviously better with it now because I'm really trying to be really self-aware about when I'm shutting myself down or cutting myself off from people. And it's not when someone else is having a hard time. If someone else is having a hard time, it's very easy for me to reach out to them and check in on them and hold a lot of space for them. Let's just let this ambulance go by. Do you see my cat? That's his face. Oh God, that's so cute. Hi. So, what the fuck was I saying? Oh yes. I have a very, very easy time holding space for people. It comes very naturally to me, which is I think a benefit of holding a lot of space for my parent, and we'll get to that in a second. When it's the other way around, it's ex extremely easy for me to shut down and not share things and feel like any emotional difficulty I'm dealing with personally will be a burden to someone else if I talk to them. Because we're both keeping the secret together, there is a bonding that I believe happened and an enmeshment type of trauma that happened because my parent was the only person I was allowed to reach out to authentically. I am also the only person that my parent can reach out to authentically. I'm the only one that knows their dirty laundry, so to speak. I believe I developed a belief that I will be a burden if I reach out. It'll feel the same way to someone else if I reach out to them, even if it's my friend, my partner. I know that's not the case, like I know that intellectually because a lot of people find joy in you confiding in them 
and wanting to hear their opinion about something, wanting them to know like what they think, what's your advice, what do you feel the same way? I don't know if I brought this up yet, but growing up in that type of system, it felt like it was me and my parent against the entire world, and we had to protect ourselves from the entire world. If you're taught and conditioned to keep a secret as big as my home is horrible and I feel miserable every time I go home, if that is what you're feeling, then it's easy to think the only way to have relationships with anyone outside of my household is to put on a mask and pretend to be really happy, really bubbly. That's something that I would do, which leads to not being able to create authentic relationships, not feeling authentically seen and acknowledged in your relationships. And even if you have a couple friends, you still feel alone. It's impossible to create authentic relationships when you think and you have these beliefs that the world is scary, no one's gonna understand you, you can't be 100% authentic with others. How can you possibly have an authentic relationship with someone else when you're hiding one of the biggest conditioning experiences that you have had, which is what your house system was like? One of the reasons why I believe I was taught to keep my home a secret, the condition of my home a secret, and the condition of my parent too, is because they were afraid of judgment being passed on them and also of realistic consequences that would come of raising a child in this type of household, which would be I would be taken away or the building management would put a lot of pressure on them to fix it. In our society right now, because no one really talks about this and no one has a lot of, like even people who are struggling with hoarder conditions, there aren't a lot of people that you can go to for help with that. So. I understand why my parent was afraid to be found out because I don't think we have established a good support system for them, let alone for the children who have to suffer as well. Obviously I'm working on this in therapy, so I'm really trying to debunk these core beliefs that aren't beneficial to me. Now I'm at an age, and all of my friends are a similar age as I am, where we can articulate I don't really have the space for that right now, or yes, I want you to know I can hold space for you, I want you to talk to me, I want to be the person there for you. And it's really great when you have different people that you can go to for different supports that you need. My support system is small because I don't have that many friends, but the friends that I do have are ride or die, I can talk to them about anything, and I have to remember moving forward, I can rely on people who I want to be in a relationship with. That's not just a romantic partner, it's also a best friend or a good friend. Those also require you being there for one another and that's a really beautiful thing. It doesn't have to be a burden, it doesn't have to be unhealthy. You can orchestrate those healthy boundaries for yourself and ask your whoever you're in a relationship with and whatever relationship that is, I need you to tell me what you need and what you're comfortable with and I'll do the same too. Hold each other accountable, you know? But up until very recently, I wasn't being really self-aware as to why I was shutting myself down from people. With this specific trauma, I've really had to come to terms with the fact that I cannot heal everything in a matter of a year or a couple months. I can't get rid of all of the emotional baggage that has come with it. It all comes up in waves, which is great because I think if everything came up at once, I would lose my mind. You know, new things are going to come up in a couple years from now. I haven't lived in my childhood home in about 10 years, and the concept of loneliness stemming from that childhood trauma has just come up and it's been basically 10 years. This is a slow moving process because that's the best way for us to heal through it, is to take it day by day, acknowledge things that are coming up, see if there's a pattern coming up in your life right now, and mine was loneliness. I wanna be able to talk about this with all of you because any epiphany that I have 
I want to share it's almost like I'm trying to heal my younger self too by talking to you guys I think and holding space for myself too because I know the people who watch this are going to understand and they're gonna and even if it's something I'm just gonna let the clock go behind me even if it's something that you feel differently or you have a different experience if you're still struggling with loneliness I think that we can all come together with that feeling and recognize it's not because we are actually alone that we feel lonely. It's because we're having thoughts that prevent us from reaching out to other people, feeling comfortable to reach out to people. That's why we feel lonely, you know? I would love to be an example to all of you as you are all an example to me that we are not alone in this world and we are not alone with this trauma. There are a lot of people who deal with this and you all are beautiful examples, although I wish none of you went through it. You are all beautiful examples as to why I can really bond with people authentically over this. So I just wanna say thank you so much for all that you give, even if you just give time out of your day to watch the video, even if it's just you like the video because you resonate with it, or you comment your own story. So let me know where you guys are at. Let me know how you're doing. <laughs> I love the fact that we can be authentic together and talk about this together because you guys are the only people I talk to about this, um, like really intimately. And I love the gift that you all have given me of being vulnerable yourselves. Yeah, let's just open up a dialogue about loneliness and see where we are all at together. Until next time.